Thanks for joining us today. Today I'm going to be showing you uh, what I call a sandbox toy. It's very simple. The kids love it. It's got four little wheels and stuff like that. I think you just got a big chunk of wood here and I'll take a couple of quick measurements and uh, then I'll be going to the bandsaw. Okay, here we go. There's a marker on here that tells me my approximate measurements. There's also a safety feature you need to use. A little tiny stick like this has a little cutout on it. And you push on this and you push on the side and you push through. Okay, I'm just going to be sanding some of the rough edges off this so I can draw the pattern. That's all, now I can go and draw a pattern. Okay, I'm just gonna be uh, drawing a freehand sketch of a truck. All my stuff are freehands. And uh, the kids love them. Every one is slightly different than every other one. So I'll just draw, draw it now. Okay, I'm at the band saw. Kind of looks like a truck. It's kind of cut out a little bit, looks like a truck. Now the next thing to put in 
is uh, markers for where the wheels are going to go. So uh, I'll do that. And here's the wheels that I'm going to be using. They're inch, inch and a quarter. And you just put one here until the whole level is above the empty space here. So you can just sort of put a mark there. And center punch it. Now the wheels are a quarter inch hole and the quarter inch dowel, but you can't just drill a quarter inch hole because there'll be no space for the wheel to turn. So I have to have a bigger drill than a quarter inch, maybe five sixteenths or something, something bigger so that there is space in here because the dowel itself will expand slightly so everything you want to, to run evenly. So I'll go and put the, the drill press on right now. Now, the dowel is, is a quarter inch. This is the size of it. And this is a hole I'm gonna be putting through the piece of wood to give the wheel some space. So I'll be putting this drill in. And when you're drilling through anything, always use a piece of wood under it so that your drill doesn't hit the steel plate. So I'll put this on. You always use this piece of wood so that you don't drill down into the steel hole. What I did drill was a, a bigger hole for the dowel because it needs space to move inside the wood because the wood will swell slightly. And as you can see, the dowel fits perfectly on the wood, on the wheel. So that's fine. When you put it all together like this, then you pretty well have your car fixed. But before I put the wheels on, I'm going to go over to the router and round all these edges. You always have to go to the left side when you're doing this because if you go the other way, you'll lose control of this. You want to hang on to your fingers. So I'll turn it on.
Okay, the dowel fits the wheel. Sometimes there the dowels are different odd sizes, but uh, you just stick a couple of wheels on like this so you get the height that you want to cut it at, and just kind of measure it. Make it a little bit longer, and then go over and cut two pieces of dowel in that length. After I cut the dowel in the sides, they're a little bit rough on the end, so I just give them a little bit of a sand, sandpaper or any sort of a thing. So they should be fine. I'm ready for gluing. Now, the average glue that I use is a yellow quantity. It's a good quality. Don't use the white glue for gluing small surfaces. Lots of times you see it where they plaster the glue on, but you only want to put a little dab on. So I'll get a little thing up to pry this up. And get a little stick and an empty can and put some glue in it. That's all you need. And you can use this can for the next 15 years. Now this is why the stick is here. Because you don't want to put a ton of glue on. This yellow glue that you can pick up at any hobby shop, and the wheels also at a hobby shop. And uh, it's very fast drying, and it's very, very solid glue. It's ideal for doing small objects and big objects. And uh, I'll have to give this a few seconds. It doesn't take long for it to set. This is a little car that's finished. If you wanted to stain it or paint it, you can, and uh, it's fine. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, this is Ron Rushworth. I'm Ron Rushworth from Ron's Workshop. And today I'd like to show you how to make a picture frame holder. It's a fairly easy project and uh, it will do for almost large objects or small objects just to hold. And uh, it's fairly easy. So I'll just, I've cut out a pattern here on a cardboard and you can trace around. I've traced two of these things because you'll need one for each end and uh, I'll be cutting them on a large bandsaw for the, the larger stuff and I'll be cutting them on a smaller bandsaw to do the curves because big bandsaw won't do the curves.
Now to cut out a little circle, because the blade won't curve, you have to cut straight lines down. Next step is, is how to cut a thin piece of wood for your backing. You'll need two little strips of wood, and they'll need to be fairly thin. So this is how they'll work. You have to put your guard up fairly close. Well, you get your little push stick and you can push it through without touching your fingers. I'm going to be using a router, and a router is a highly dangerous piece of stuff because the average motor runs 3,500 revolutions. This thing runs at 25,000 revolutions, so it's going at a high speed, so you have to be extremely careful w with it, and don't take your eye off it at all. You always have to go from right to left when using a router, otherwise it'll go cockeyed. And so I'll turn it on and show you what I mean.
Okay, I've changed my drill press into a sander. And you can buy these little sanding attachments. You just take the bit out and uh, use it as a sander. And, and with this, you can do rounded curves. And uh, To do this sanding thing, you have to have the bottom part of this slightly below your table and then lock the table so that when you put this thing on, it's, it's actually sitting there and the sander is a bit below it so that you can push right on, on the tabletop. Okay, we got the four pieces cut out. The width of these things can be any length you want. I usually make them around six inches and because that seems to be an average size. So the only thing left to do now is glue it on or nail it on. And for now, I'll uh, just glue these on. You can buy little tiny clamps. any hardware store. This is the end of the project. The glue will take about a half an hour with this yellow glue. You can paint it or stain it. And this is Ron Rushworth. Thank you. Mm -hmm.